All right, welcome everyone. Welcome to the Smith Master of Finance Information session. I hope that you're all doing well. Thank you so much for joining us here this afternoon. So we're going to be discussing the Smith Master of Finance program that we offer out of our Smith Toronto facility. I'll be going through what this program has to offer and ways that you can and how you can join the program if you are interested in joining. A couple of housekeeping items before we get started. This session will be recorded. So if there's anything that you've missed, but once you've registered for this, you will receive a copy of the recording. And we will save some, times for, some time for questions at the end, but please feel free if there's something that you didn't understand to submit your questions to the Q&A button. Uh, we have Jen Mayer on the line. She will also be answering any questions that you may have. So thank you so much for joining. And let's get started. Before we get started, we always like to do a land acknowledgement. So Smith Toronto is situated on the traditional territory of the Huron Wendat, the Bataan First Nations, the Seneca, and the Mississaugas of the Credit River. We are grateful to be able to live, learn, and play on these lands. Once again, thank you so much for joining. My name is Gary Hines. I am the Associate Director for the Master of Finance program here at the Smith School of Business. My role entails uh, making sure that the program is run smoothly, that we have our calendar for the year. Uh, I also conduct interviews. So if you are interested and you apply for the program, one of the steps in the program will be an interview with myself where we will discuss you're wanting to join the program and making sure that this is the right program for you. So let's talk about what this program is and how it works and where it is, where it is run and where it is held. So this year, this program is a one year full-time while you work program. We are conveniently located at 200 Front Street West. So we're located downtown Toronto. So if you are somebody that works within the financial district, which we refer to as Bay Street on Bay Street, where there most of our banks and financial firms are located, then we're just minutes away from there. We're also minutes away from Union Station. So we're very conveniently located. And yes, this program allows you to work full time and take it on the side. We have how our schedule works. It allows you to continue working and take the program and you get to finish this in under in just under one year. So let's talk about a little bit more about what you'll get out of this program. So what this program does and what it provides our students is we give you a deeper and broader understanding of finance. So we will help equip you with the knowledge and the tools to move immediately from a theory to real world applications. So this program is all about learning by doing. If you're somebody who is writing the CFA, you may notice that some of our courses look very similar to the CFA, but we're really focused on not the theoretical side, but the application side. Like how do these things work in the real world? We'll help, we, we, we look at current markets, what's happening in the market. So some of our courses, we're talking about what's going on in the stock market, what's going on in the economy. We're looking at market trends. So we're looking at the implication of like the Fed, the Fed making decisions, the Bank of Canada making decisions. How does that affect the bottom line? How does that affect stocks, bonds? How do these things correlate? Um, so these are some of the things that we look at in the program. We also give you the opportunity to communicate your ideas uh, accurately and concisely. So you may be someone, you have a lot of information, but how do you get that information across? If you're somebody that works with clients, how do you help sell them on the ideas and, and, and really help promote the products that you're offering? This is something that we work with, we work on in the program. You'll also have an opportunity to work with a group of diverse individuals who have maybe years of finance experience or maybe just starting off their career within the finance industry. You'll have that opportunity to work with them um, and maybe they've worked in different areas of finance. It's an excellent opportunity for you to work with some amazing people while in the program. There's also opportunities for you to get professional and personal growth while in the program, take on leadership opportunities. We, you know, we really try to foster not only the learning side, but you know, how do we help you grow as an individual and as a professional? These are some of the things that we do in the program. 
you also have opportunities. You know, this program is about opportunities in the job market. So we have our career center will, that will help you if you're looking to, you know, if you're really looking to ad- advance your career in finance or you're looking to get into finance, we have our career team that can help you with that. I'll talk a little bit more about the career side of things in a bit. Let's talk a little bit more about the delivery format for the program. As I mentioned, we're very conveniently located. Our program starts once per year. So every June, that is the start date for our program. And our program runs from June until April of the following year. Our close, our classes are held in person at our Smith Toronto facility, which is located at 200 Front Street West. It happens every once, every weekend, and every alternating weekend. So for example, we had class this past Monday. If we have class this coming Saturday, that means the following Saturday, we will not have class, but we'll have class on the Monday again. So we have class every Monday and every alternating Saturday. We do start off our program with a one week session in Kingston. So if you are interested in joining the program, you will have to join us in Kingston for that one week to begin the program. I'll talk a little bit more about what that one week looks like and why it is mandatory for anyone looking to participate in this program. We also have a three day session that we hold also in person in at Smith Toronto. Throughout the program, you will have opportunities to register for coaching, uh, for career support to help you uh, throughout your time. As I mentioned, there are opportunities for you to take on leadership roles. You can join clubs. You can take part in case competitions. And throughout the year, we host a number of networking events. So we are going through some changes with regards to our courses. We've been conducting a curriculum review for over a year now. And hopefully we'll have some exciting information for you about the changes that will come uh, on the curriculum side of things. What we've, what we've been doing is we, we're looking at what's happening in the market. As you know, finance is changing. There's a lot of things going on within the financial market. We want to ensure that we're giving our students that what they're coming out with, the pro, for what the information and the knowledge that they're gaining from the program We want to make sure that you're going to be able to utilize that when you're in the workplace. So we want to make sure that the skills that you're learning is going to be valuable in the marketplace. So that's why we've been conducting a curriculum review, and we're looking forward to sharing those changes with you very soon. Let's talk about that one week in Kingston. So as I mentioned to you at the beginning of this program, we will start off with one week in Kingston, Ontario. The image you're looking at on your screen here is Goods Hall. This is the main campus for the Smith School of Business. This uh, campus holds our full-time MBA program, our commerce program, and our Masters of International Business program. So we really love bringing our students here to begin the program for that one week. Um, So if you are working, you will be required to take that week off to spend with us. And and the reason why we do this, we have a number of reasons why we bring you here. If you are not a student of Queens prior, then you you would not have had the great fortune of being uh, in Kingston, experiencing uh, the main campus, Goods Hall. So we wanna give you that opportunity. We also want you to feel like a full-time student for this week. Even though the program is considered a full-time program, We don't necessarily operate on a full-time schedule. As I mentioned, the classes are once per week and once every alternating weekend. So you don't really get to feel like a full-time student during that week. This is an excellent opportunity for you to leave behind, you know, all the responsibilities with work and just give us that one week where you can start the program. You can get to meet your classmates. You can get to establish those relationships. You also get to meet your team who you're going to be working with for the the first few classes, you're gonna get to form those relationships, get get to develop those best practices that will really help you throughout your time in the program. You you get to interact with faculty, you get to see Kingston. Um, It's it's a really excellent and fun time that the students have. And I wanna show you a sample of the schedule. So if you look at it here, you can see it's it's pretty jam-packed. There's a lot going on. One of the things that we get to also do is we get to finish one of our courses during the week. So we start and finish one of our courses during this time. So 
while some people ask, well, what is this? What is this? Is this like a registration or orientation for the program? Uh, well, kind of. It, it sort of is, but it is a, an intense and busy week, but it's one of the most fun that students have during that time. We have things like our Smith Challenge. We have a boat cruise that we do. So students really get, really enjoy the opportunity to the point where they ask if they can spend an extra day or when, and they also always ask us, when do we get an opportunity to go back to Kingston? So it is really a really fabulous time that we have here and really gives us a chance to establish those relationships and, and really set the tone for the upcoming year. So this is, these are some of the reasons why it's mandatory for anyone who is interested in the program that you will have to join us in Kingston in person. Earlier, I, start, I spoke about that you will be receiving career support throughout your time in the program. So let's talk a little bit about that career side of things now. So if you're somebody who is joining the program, you're either looking to get into finance, let's say you've been an accountant and you're looking to break into finance, or you're hoping to just gain some knowledge uh, in the finance industry, you're looking to get the, the credentials, or you're looking to pivot or advance your career in finance, you know, we do have support for you throughout the year. So we have our career advancement team or our career advancement center or CAC that will be working with you throughout the year. Our career advancement center, they're broken up into two different groups. So we have our career coaches, and we have our corporate relationship team. So the career coaches are the ones that you can book the one-on-one -on -one appointments with. They'll help you with things like your resume, uh, how to go about coffee chats. We, we work with and conduct interview prep. So we really help you prepare you for you know, if your career in finance. Then we have our corporate relationship team. They're the ones that form the relationships with the banks, pension firms, asset management firms, and then they get they, we host a number of events at our Smith Toronto facility. So they get those corporate partners to come in. Um, some people are usually recruiting during that time, or if it's just an opportunity to build your network, there's always those opportunities that we work with throughout the year for our students. So they're an excellent resource, resource in the program. And we really encourage our students from the time you join the program to really utilize the resources that are available to you. Don't wait until the end, because most times when you wait until the end, you know, you're really chasing and you're really trying to push a boulder uphill. It's better to start off in the beginning and really work with our career coach. Make sure that your, your LinkedIn is, is up to date and it looks presentable. Make sure that your resume reflects uh, your ability and, and it showcases your talent and your knowledge. So we really encourage our students to work with our career coaches from jump. So as I mentioned to you, this program is all about experiential learning. And there are a lot of different ways that you can showcase that learning. And we, we utilize this through some case competitions that we take part in every year. So some of the case competitions, these are staple that we have throughout the year in the program. So we have our Smith Women in Finance who would host a case competition. This one hasn't been held in, uh, in quite some time. It's something that we're going to try to re rebuild and bring back in the future. But usually our Smith Women in Finance, they usually host a case competition and get representatives, representatives from other universities to take part in that competition. We, are, we always take part in our CFA Ethics Challenge, CFA Research Challenge, Van Berkham Small Cap Case Competition, and the National Investment Banking Competition. These competitions are an excellent way for you to expand your network, get to meet people and really showcase your ability, your presentation uh, skills, your research skills. Utilize a lot of the tools and the information that you're learning in the program really put it in the, and showcase it in these case competitions. It's really helpful for our students and we really encourage our students every year to participate in these. So these are some of the ways that you can really, really um, take advantage of the experiential learning in the program, it really help set you apart. As I mentioned, there's a number of ways that you can also build your personal leadership skills. So you, if you are interested, you can become the student uh, class president or class executive. Uh, so you will be voted in by your peers. So if you're interested in running for that, you have an opportunity. Um, uh, we also have the Smith Women in Finance, who I mentioned runs the case competition uh, for the Smith Women in Finance. So 
the Smith Women in Finance, what, what they really do is they're really about promoting and, and pushing women in finance. Uh, as we know, typically every year we would see that there are much, many more men in the program than women. So we have this club to really help promote women in finance. They host a number of networking events, uh, uh, speed networking events, uh, case competition. They've had mentorship in the past. So you can become the chair for the Smith Women in Finance, build your team and really have some uh, events and, and activities to really promote women in finance. Then we have the ever popular QAF. So QAF stands for the Queen's University Alternative Asset Fund. So it is a hedge fund run by students where students are actually managing real money. Uh, the, the club is managing over probably $500,000 in their portfolio. Uh, it's run in conjunction with a multitude of different programs at the school. So MFIN usually takes part. Uh, I believe the CEO for the club this year is an MFIN student. Uh, we have the MBAs, MFIT, MMA. So we have a number of programs that take part in this, in this club. It's an excellent opportunity for students to, to learn about managing money. Um, it's one of our more pop, most popular uh, clubs at the school and students are, it's really competitive to get into, but it, it really gives you a leg up in terms of, you know, your marketability. I want to share with you a quote from somebody who was a former student of the program who took part in a lot of, of, uh, of these activities and really leveraged them in when he was, you know, looking for his next role. I'm not going to read the, 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 the full quote here, but one of the things that I, I want to mention is uh, as leaders of QAF, we were required to take a firm view of the financial markets and speak about them fluently. We were investing real money, so we had to do real research. When I came in as CEO, I wanted to ensure there was a process around everything. I used what we were doing as part of the CFA research challenge and brought it to QAF. So here, Julius is talking about a number of ways where he was utilizing the experiential learning that he was getting from the program, from the case competitions, and implemented it in QAF. So this is just all part of the experiential learning that we're able to offer our students and really encourage students to take advantage of these. Experiential learning doesn't stop there. We do have our merger and modeling uh, workshop that we host every year capital restructuring modeling. So these are put on by formerly known as Marquee Group. If you are considering doing the CFA or you are writing the CFA examination, you would probably see that there is a modeling, uh, modeling component as well that was recently introduced. The individuals who conduct these workshops, the modeling workshops, they're the one that designed the, the modeling workshops that you see that have been proposal or that is now included in the CFA in the CFA examination. We also offer opportunities for CFA prep. So if you're writing different levels of the CFA, we also have opportunities for you to help you help you ensure that you pass. With all this talk about the CFA, we are proud to mention that we are a partner of the CFA. So when the we offer scholarships for people who are writing different levels of the CFA, uh, when the CFA have different events, we will get invitations to those and we will share them with you. We also are a proud partner of Kaya. So if you are interested in writing that examination as well, we offer scholarships for that exam. Uh, if there are any events, uh, any type of webinar, we would share those for our students. It's just another way that we really love leveraging our partnership and sharing more information with you and we hope that you will also take advantage of that. We're also a proud partner of the Canadian Olympic Committee and Game Plan. So what we do is if there are, we offer scholarships to former Canadian Olympic athletes who are looking to transition to, to another a new career after competition. Uh, one of the things that we've offered in the past is MFIN Gives Back. What MFIN Gives Back does is that we pair our current students with former Canadian Olympic athletes and help them run through a stock market simulation. So just a way that our students give back and, you know, volunteer work is something that we're really proud of. So let's take a look at the class profile for this year. Uh, so this year we have a total, we started off our program with 58 students. The average age is around 33. 
with the average seven years work experience. Uh, one third of our class have at least CFA level one and 6% of our students are CFA charter holders. Uh, as I've mentioned, we usually see many more male in the program than female. So 75% male, 25% female. Most of our students in the program are domestic with 18% being international. And our program is very diverse. We see people from a multitude of different countries coming into the program. This is just some of the citizenship uh, of people in the program this year, but we, we have a very diverse class in terms of not only citizenship, but also industries that they come from, their backgrounds. As you can look at the right, you will see some of the backgrounds that they come from. A lot of people, of course, coming from the finance industry. But some people come from mining, uh, real estate, government. The main thing that holds them all together, uh, that the main reason why they're in the program is because they are interested in either pivoting into car their career in finance or advancing their career in finance. And that's one of the reasons why they take this program. So traditionally, this is what we, we have. We have a graduating class. We have an alumni pool of over 1,100 students. Uh, the typical class profile for our program is one third female, uh, two thirds male, 20% usually are the international students. So we're, we're, our class currently is, is, is on trend historically. Uh, these are the numbers that we see. And you know we get the question, well, what careers do people end up in once they're finished this program? And we're happy to report that people go into a number of different careers depending on their interests. So these are just some of the careers that people end up in, investment product managers, uh, we have investment bankers, market research analysts, fixed income analysts, equity research analysts. So people go into many different career paths, just depends on where their, what, what their interest, where their interest lies. That's, that's really, really the big thing for where, where you can end up once you're finished with this program. So if, you, if you're, you're sold and you, you're interested in taking this program, our application process is very straightforward. All we require from you is a copy of your unofficial transcript and a copy of your resume, and we can get that process started. Once you submit that information, you will be paired with our fantastic application advisor, Jen Mayer, who's also on this call. So if you submit uh, questions to our Q&A, she probably will be there answering as well. Once you, once you are paired with her, she will be working with you throughout your entire application process. So your, your application is not going into a black hole. You are going to be paired with an individual who will be working with you. And we look at all application on a case by case basis. So we do not look at it and we do not just paint a broad brush as saying like, you don't meet this, you don't meet that. We look at everyone's situation on an individual basis and that's how we conduct our assessment. So just note that if you do submit your application, we are going to look at it and we're not comparing it to someone else, but we're looking at what you've done in the past, where you're, where, what you're currently doing, and that's how we base our assessment. So here's what we look for. So we do require that you have an undergraduate degree because of course this is a master's program. Uh, we do ask that you have a minimum of two years relevant work experience, but if you do not have two years work experience, we will make an exception. If you have a strong GMAT score or you've successfully completed CFA level one exam and you have an undergraduate degree in business, economics and strong internships. So as I mentioned, we will require you to have uh, at least CFA level one or GMAT or if you've completed the GRE, or you have a CPA from North America. If you have any one of those things, then you will not be required to write the GMAT. Now we do make exceptions for people uh, and we, we do offer waivers for people who have exceptional backgrounds as well um, to get waivers for, from the GMAT. But again, that's something we would have to make a determination on when we receive your application. We would have to look at your full profile. We would look at your grades from undergrad. We would look at what you've been doing for the past few years. Uh, and then we can make a determination on whether or not you qualify for a waiver from the GMAT. But if you do have CFA level one, you will not be required to write CFA level one or higher. You will not be required to write the GMAT or the GRE. To wrap up your application, we would need two letters of reference, a cover letter, and then 
as I indicated earlier, one of the steps and probably the final step would be an interview with myself to discuss your interest in taking the program. So I mentioned a lot of great things that this program have, has to offer. What does it cost? So our program is all inclusive. So for our domestic students, it is $39,703. International students, it's $76,900. That includes everything from your tuition, the case competitions that you may participate in, uh, your books, meals and accommodations for the in-person session in Kingston. One of the things that I didn't mention is that what to, for our in-person session in June, for the opening session for the beginning of the program, the only thing you have to worry about with regards to, to Kingston is getting to Kingston and returning home from Kingston. Your meals, uh, your accommodation and parking if you're driving are all covered already by the program. So, uh, and this program is also OSAP eligible. So if you are interested in the program, please just go to our website, smithqueens.com slash MFIN, and you can start your assessment to find out if you qualify, just need a copy of your unofficial transcript and your resume. There is no application fee. If you're watching this on your computer and you have your cell phone, you can also scan that QR code, which will take you to our application page where you can start your assessment. All right, that is all the information that I have for you regarding the program. And now I'll turn it over to you and I'll be happy to answer any questions that you may have regarding the program. So I'll just turn over to my QA. All right, just pulling up my QA. So I'll give you some time to ask any questions that you may have. All right, not seeing any questions as yet, but I know sometimes people are, are typing, so I'll give it a few more seconds. All right. All right. We have our first question. All right. So the first question is, given the program's structure for working professionals, what kind of support is offered to help students balance their studies with their current jobs? Are there any flexible options if work schedules become demanding? That's an excellent question. So we are, our program is flexible to an extent. Um, we do understand that uh, people who are working professionals may have demanding schedules and they may have certain times of the year where they're busier than others. So while our sessions are ourselves, so each course in our programs, there's a total of eight sessions per course. We do offer two absences from the program. So you can not attend. Uh, most of our courses are recorded. So you will have the opportunity to make sure that you can catch up. Not all of our courses are recorded, of course, but most of them are. So you have an opportunity to catch up. So for each course, you have two absences that we allow, um, but we do require you to attend at least 75%. So there are flexibility if you have to take care of something or you, know, you have your work schedule or sometimes people have to take a flight. We do offer two opportunities for you to miss uh, per course. You can miss two of those sessions. So there, there is some flexibility with regards to the program. Great question. Next question. Uh, you mentioned the ability to apply for a waiver, GMAT or CFA level one. What does the process look like? How many waivers do you typically issue per annum? Uh, we don't have a typical number that we, good question, that we offer. It really depends on your application. It really depends on your, your what you've done. So that's why we need a copy of your resume, an unofficial transcript, and that'll help us make a determination. So once you've applied and you start working with Jen, the process now is just you, you may request that, you know, I would like to be considered for a waiver. And that's when we would look at your application. We would look at your resume. We would look at your unofficial transcript, look at your grades. And that's what, that way we would be able to say if you qualify or not for a waiver. Great questions so far. All right. I still have some time for another if 
if there's anyone else that has uh, have another question, happy to answer any others. Great question. All right, we have another question that just came in. Are there scholarship or financial aid options available for this program or what criteria are used for selection? Uh, good question. So for this program, the only scholarships that we offer from our side, it's that we offer a Dean's Entrance Scholarship and it's up to $5,000, which doesn't cover that much, but that's not something that you have to apply for. It's something that's given to you at the time of your offer. So if you are to receive an offer from the program, it will be included in there if you are, if you are the recipient of that Dean's Entrance Scholarship. It will also include how much, uh, how much you received for that scholarship. Uh, the, for that, it, what they really look at is if you have a really exceptional background strong grades, great interview, um, years work experience, all of these things qualify you for that scholarship, but everyone is considered for that scholarship once they've submitted their application. In terms of other scholarships and financial aid, as I mentioned, this program is OSAP eligible. So if you qualify for OSAP, it is OSAP eligible. Any other financial options, if you're not in Canada and you're an international student, I would encourage you to look in your, at your, in your home country to see if there's anything available. We've also listed a number of options that we've been able to find on our website. So if you go onto our website, you go to the fees and financing page. On the right-hand side, you will see some scholarship opportunities or things that are available. You'll have to go in there and see if there's anything that you qualify for. Another great question. All right, I'm happy to take one or two more questions if anybody has anything that they wanna ask. Great questions so far. Right, next question. Do you have any statistics on the number of graduates from the program who have successfully transitioned into investment banking? Well, that's a great question. Um, the short answer to that is no, we do not have any statistics on how many students have successfully transitioned into investment banking. But what I can tell you is that investment banking is not a simple area to get into. So if I have to take a guess, I would say it's probably less than 1% of our student population that gets into investment banking, because investment banking is an extremely difficult area um, to get into. And we do have a lot of people who are interested in getting into investment banking. If you looked at our previous webinar, so if you go to our Smith School of Business um, YouTube channel, you would see that we, host, we had a webinar, I think it was October, 22nd or 26th, I can't remember the exact date, but the last webinar we had a panel of three former students, so three alum join us. And one of the students that joined us, they are working in investment banking. Uh, they got into that through, the, they were working at the bank already and they were able to navigate their way into that. But it's a very difficult area of finance to get into, it's quite popular but not many people are able to transition into investment banking. So we always tell students, if that's your number one, make sure that you have a backup option uh, because it's a very challenging area to get into. Great question. And I encourage you to go on to our YouTube channel, uh, Smith School of Business YouTube channel. You can find a number of previously um, hosted webinars. You can find a lot more information in there, not only the general webinars, like the one I just did, but you can find some content specific ones uh, about life after the MFIN program, where we had three panelists join us to discuss how, what, what, has, what has life been after the, they finished the program? So I would encourage you to go on there and, and see that information session. It, it's really helpful. All right, I'm not seeing any other questions, so I do appreciate your time. Thank you so much for joining and thank you so much for the excellent questions. If we were not, if you had a question that we were not able to answer, please feel free to uh, send them our ways. In terms of our next information session, I encourage you to join if you are an international student. 
we know that there's been a lot of challenges or changes with regards to study permits and visas for these programs. And there, there may be a lot of misinformation out there. So if you're an international student and you're interested in learning about the changes and how it affects you and life after the program, I encourage you to sign up for our next information session. So it's about student, uh, so for your tips, uh, including the study permits. So that one will be held November 26th. You go on there and sign up, even if you cannot attend the webinar live at the, on the day that it's being held, you will get a copy of the recording. So I do encourage you to go sign up for the November 26th information session if you are an international student and considering this program. Um, that's it from me, but as, uh, as I said, if you have any questions, feel free to send them our way. If you are interested in the program but not sure you're qualified, uh, apply anyways. It's pretty simple. There's no application fee. All we need is a copy of your resume and unofficial transcript, and let us, let us walk, you, walk you through the application process and answer any questions that you may have. Not sure if you qualify for a waiver? Submit your application anyways, and then ask for that waiver, and then we'll be able to better advise you. I do thank you for your time. I do thank you for your patience, and thank you for joining us here today and going through uh, information session. Again, I'm putting up on the screen again the assessment QR code, and if you're interested in submitting your application, go to smithqueens.com slash mfin. Thank you. That's it from us. Enjoy the rest of your day or rest of your night, depending on where you're joining us from. Take care. Bye-bye.